Hello, my name is Paul Graham. I'm Dean of the Chapel here at the seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Concordia Theological Seminary. We're going to return one more time to the conversation we had last month about how to keep the natural rhythm of speech moving in the Psalms, but this time we're going to be taking ourselves a step further by looking at several examples in the services where the same principles hold true. For the first example, let's look at the Venite in the service of Matins. What you have here is actually a psalm tone, although many people don't realize it. As long as they've been singing the Venite, they've actually been singing a psalm to a psalm tone. In fact, it's a double tone, and it's a little more complex than the psalm tones that we have for the psalms that we sing. You see here are the first two lines of the Venite. You have that reciting tone at the beginning of the line with a varying number of syllables underneath it, with then a cadence at the end. In the first line, you see there's only three notes, but in the second line, there's five notes. We then move on to the second half of the Venite, and here you have again two more psalm tones. This is actually a double tone. Again, that first line, which is the third line of the verse, has three notes in the cadence, and the fourth line, the last line, has five notes. So going back to the beginning of the Venite, we take a look at this, and uh, the same principles one hopes can hold true, that the singing of this is going to be in a natural rhythm of speech. Now, for accompanying this, for musicians, you have to realize that you don't have complete control over the congregation. They're going to sing, Oh, come, let us sing, in the first verse, at their own speed. And you do have to be listening to them, perhaps anticipating slightly when they're going to come to the word too, so that you're ready to move the notes. But you can't move it too early. If you're singing those words at your own pace and ignoring the congregation, you may either have them waiting for you because you're singing too slowly, or you may just beat them to the cadence and they'll be trying to catch up then. So one has to pay attention and try to aim for the same um, arrival at that cadence. But then comes the question, how can you help to move them along? And the answer is that when you come to the cadence, you allow it to flow through. So looking again at verse 1, we take a look and see, you know, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let me sing it so you have a sense of that. But notice at the ends of the phrases what I do. And I'm going to sing the whole first verse, all four lines. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Now, that's probably not the speed at which most congregations are singing this. And so the organist has to be very careful. And yet, what I would suggest, the best way to help the congregation move forward is that when you arrive at the cadence, just let it gently move. Don't let them hang on too much. And at the end of the phrase especially, lift the hands so that it encourages them to breathe and move on. And I think you'll find that if you do that over a period of time, very gently, you don't push them, but very gently, you'll find that they'll, they'll be able to start to flow along maybe perhaps a little bit better, which can be uh, beneficial, I think, for the singing of that psalm. For another example, we'll go to the Divine Service, setting three. Another very familiar piece of music is the Gloria Nixelsis. And what you have here are actually more psalm tones. It's just not written that way, and so most people don't realize it. Very quickly, as you take a look at this, you realize that there's something different here about the notation that right away suggests uh, that we might end up going slower than we want to, and that is that the cadences end up being written in half notes, which look like they ought to go pretty slowly. But that's not really the intention. If you look at the very beginning, the, the pastor's intonation, the glory be to God on high, I mean, one would think, with that multitude of angels in the sky over Bethlehem, that that was probably sung with a lot of gusto on the night of Jesus' birth. And so one hopes that the pastor is going to, to some degree, let that happen. Not singing it this way, glory be to God on high, but glory be to God on high. And even that little bit of encouragement might allow the congregation to learn to sing it this way then in response. And on earth peace, good will toward men, and not peace, good will toward men, which is often the temptation. As we mentioned with other examples, you cannot, as the organist, force the congregation to move faster. But at the ends of the phrases, especially, if you lift, 
encourages the congregation to breathe and to keep moving, you can gently allow a piece like this also to move along in a way that will um, uh, uh, cause it to be just a, a much more pleasant canticle to sing. Sometime I'd urge you to take a look at this Gloria Excelsis and just check and see how many times the repetitions occur. There's actually several different psalm tones that are used in the various sections, and one of them even repeats at the end again. It's quite a complex little um, piece, and it's something that you probably aren't even aware of, but might find to be kind of intriguing to see. Finally, for our last example, we're going to take a look at some pastor's chant, because the same principles hold true for chanting a psalm or chanting some of these canticles in the services, as well as the pastor chanting. And for the examples here we'll take a look at, we're going to be in setting one of the divine service, the Kyrie, where the pastor sings five different petitions to which the congregation sings, Lord have mercy, and then amen at the very end. Again, rhythm of speech. So, musicians, if you're watching this, if your pastors ever ask you for help in chanting something, help send along these principles with them. Help them to understand that this is, can apply to their singing. And you might even suggest they watch this video if, if you think it might be helpful. The first phrase, in peace let us pray to the Lord. Just a natural rhythm of speech. One hopes the singing is the same way. In peace let us pray to the Lord. It doesn't have to be fast, but it ought to just flow through naturally. And then when you come to the second one at the bottom of the screen, the second petition, you notice, again, we have a reciting tone with a lot of syllables, followed then by that petition, let us pray to the Lord. Here again, don't rush the notes under the reciting tone and then slow them down at the end. That's so often I, the way I hear this sung, so that it comes out something like this. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. It's as though they see those last four words with separate notes for each one and somehow think, I have to sing those slowly and carefully. But everything that comes before can be shot out like a machine gun. Let it be the rhythm of speech. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. One more example coming in the next screen. This is the longest of all these petitions. And here you have commas that can guide you to, to find ways to take little breaks so that it's helpful. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And so you see just this very natural movement of speech is, is, is the aim you want even when you're singing. Because chant really is not singing. It's just placing pitch to words so that the rhythm of speech continues and the, the notes simply gently allow that melody to, that, that text to be um, put forward. The final petition that comes at the end here is actually more of a prayer followed by an amen. And you notice these words help save comfort, each with a comma. My suggestion is not to break these up singing at something like this, help, save, comfort, and defend us, but to kind of extend the pitch and you still take a little lift, but it's not so much. So it would come out something like this. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And one last note, even on this example that you see here. Uh, encourage your choirs, encourage your soloists, encourage your pastor to pay attention to enunciation. The P in help, save, the V sound, comfort, and defend us. All of those are important to be able to clarify so that people can very clearly hear what is being sung. And at the very end, the last word, I would just put in a plug for making sure you have the D. Uh, so often it comes out, you know, even with a microphone on the pastor, you don't hear the D. Uh, maybe he doesn't pronounce it very decidedly, but it comes out as we're praying to the gracious lore, or let us pray to the lore, which is kind of an odd idea. So you have to be intentional about adding that D at the end. Well, there are some examples. I hope you find this helpful. Enunciate clearly. Let that rhythm of speech again dictate. For organists that are leading the singing, gently move the congregation along. You can't force it, but help them to find that natural rhythm of speech that, that allows the text to, to shine forth. Thank you very much.